Hey friends, welcome back to my house. It's been Mother's Day today. I'm recording this the night before you're going to watch it, of course. I've had a really good Mother's Day. I hope that you guys had a great Mother's Day with all of your family and your moms at home or those special ladies that are in your life, uh, like grandmas and aunts and um, or special friends that may be at your home. I hope that you guys had a good time today. Now, time for our miraculous journey of Edward Tulane. But before we dive into our next chapter, let's do a little previously on. So previously on the miraculous journey of Edward Tulane. When last we left off, um, Edward had been taken in by Bull and Lucy and decided to be a traveler with them. So we heard that Edward, every time he started to think about Abilene, he was having a stabbing pain in his chest. And I asked you on the last chapter, why, why did you guys think that Edward was feeling that um, stabbing pain when he thought about her? I think that maybe Edward has realized how much he really did love Abilene, and he really regrets not being able to show her that he loves her or loved her, and he regrets that he didn't love her like he should have when he was with her. We've also been hearing that, uh, and a lot of you have talked about this, um, he's coming more and more to understand why Pellegrino was disappointed with him for that reason. So today, when we dive into today's chapter, I got a couple new things I want you to think about. There's going to come a point in the chapter where you hear that he repeats people's names a lot at nighttime. Why does Edward repeat people's names as he's staring at the stars at night? And the second thing I want you to think about is um, Edward feels a new feeling for Lucy. Well, here in the story, Lucy's the dog that he's traveling with, Lucy and Bull. How does Edward, what is Edward's feeling toward Lucy? Now, with that in mind, grab your papers and pencils, get ready to jot your thoughts while I read chapter 13. They traveled on foot. They traveled in empty rail cars. They were always on the move, but in truth, said Bull, we're going nowhere. That, my friend, is the irony of our constant movement. Edwards, Edward rode in Bull's bedroll, slung over Bull's shoulders with only his head and ears sticking out. Bull was always careful to position the rabbit so that he was not looking down or up, but was instead forever looking behind him at the road they had just traveled. At night, they slept on the ground under the stars. Lucy, after her initial disappointment about Edward being unfit for consumption, meaning he wasn't a rabbit that they could eat, he was a toy rabbit, took a liking to him and slept curled up beside him. Sometimes she even rested her muzzle, that's her nose, the front of her face, on his china stomach. And then the noises she made in her sleep, whimpering and growling and chuffing, resonated inside Edward's body. To his surprise, he began to feel a deep tenderness for the dog. Another feeling. And how, you guys probably can connect with Edward on that, where it says that um, he heard all kind of noises that Lucy's making while she's sleeping. And I know I can, I've seen that a lot in my pets. They do dream and they make little noises and dream they're running and or barking in their sleep and stuff like that. It's really sweet. During the night, while Bull and Lucy slept, Edward, with his ever-open eyes, stared up at the constellations. He said their names. Remember who we learned their names from? Well, from Lawrence, when he was with Lawrence and Nellie. And then he said the names of the people who loved him. He started with Abilene, and then he went to Nellie and Lawrence, and from there to Bull and Lucy. And then he ended again with Abilene. Abilene, Nellie. Lawrence, Bull, Lucy, Abilene. See, Edward told Pellegrina, I'm not like the princess I know about love. There were times, too, when Bull and Lucy gathered around a campfire with other tramps. That's, a, that's another word for a traveling person or what they said was a hobo or um, a homeless person. Bull was a good storyteller and an even better singer. Sing for us, Bull, the men shouted. Here's a picture of them together sitting around the campfire. My battery's getting weak. I gotta hurry. 
Bull sat with Lucy leaning against his leg and Edward balanced on his right knee and he sang from somewhere deep inside himself. Just as Edward could feel Lucy's whimpers and growls resonate through his body at night, he could also feel the deep and sad sound of Bull's songs move through him. Edward loved it when Bull sang. And he was grateful too, too to Bull for sensing that a dress was not the right kind of clothing for Edward. Malone, said Bull one night, it's not my desire to offend you or to comment negatively on your choice of garb, that's clothing, but I'm forced to tell you that you stick out like a sore thumb in that princess dress. And also again, with no wish to offend, the dress has seen better days. Nellie's beautiful dress had not fared well at the dump or in its subsequent ramblings with Bull and Lucy. It was so torn and dirty and full of holes that it barely resembled a dress anymore. I have a solution, said Bull, and I hope that it meets with your approval. He took his own knit stocking cap, and cut a big hole in the top of it, two small holes on the side of it. Then he took off Edward's dress. Look away, Lucy, he said to the dog. Let's not embarrass Malone by his staring at his nakedness. Bull slid the hat over Edward's head, pulled it down and poked his arms through the smaller holes. There you go, he said to Edward. Now you just need some pants. The pants bull made himself cutting up several red handkerchiefs, sewing them together so that they formed a makeshift covering for Edward's long legs. Now you have the proper outlaw look, said bull, standing back to admire his work. Now you look like a rabbit on the run. That's the end of uh, chapter 13. So remember what I was asking you. I think my Oreo left. I was going to hold her up to you guys, but she left. Why was Edward saying people's names late at night over and over again? Whose names was he saying? And why was he saying them? And then the other thing I want you to think about again, if you need to back up and re-listen, is how was he feeling towards Lucy the dog as he was getting to know her more and more? All right. Love you guys. Hope you had a wonderful Mother Day, Mother's Day. Give your mom a hug and do extra special stuff for it, even when it's not Mother's Day. All right, see you guys tomorrow on the Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Bye!